Once upon a time, there lived a poor widow, and she had a son, Jack, and a cow, Belianka. The cow gave milk every morning, and the mother and son sold it in the bazaar, and that was how they lived. But once Belianka did not give milk, and they did not have food. Mom decided to sell the cow and open a shop with the proceeds. Jack took the rein in his hands and led the cow to the market. No sooner had he arrived than he met some wonderful old man. He said he would like to trade Jack's cow for beans. And with these words, he took out a handful of some strange beans from his pocket. The old man said these beans are magical. They need to be planted in the evening, and by morning they will grow to the very sky. Jack became very interested and agreed. The boy came home early. Mother was very angry that he gave the dairy cow in the whole neighborhood for a handful of some nasty beans. But Jack remembered the old man's words and decided that there was nothing to do, and planted beans in the yard. He went up to his attic sad, sad, and fell asleep. In the morning, Jack woke up and saw something like a large tree in the yard. And this, it turns out, his beans sprouted, and the huge stem continued to grow upward until it grew to the sky. Jack jumped onto the stem and climbed up like a ladder. He climbed and climbed and climbed and climbed until, at last, he reached the sky. There he saw a long and wide road that led him to a huge castle. Jack went to his gate and knocked. The gate opened and a tall woman stood on the threshold. Stuttering with fear, the boy asked for something for breakfast. The giantess let him in, but warned him not to catch the eye of her husband, because he is a cannibal. She took Jack to the kitchen. But before he had time to eat even half of his breakfast, suddenly the whole house shook from someone's steps. The boy was not taken aback and instantly jumped into the furnace. And at that very moment, the cannibal entered the room. Well, he was as big as a mountain. The cannibal took out two bags of gold from a huge chest and sat down to count the coins. He counted and counted, finally began to nod off and began to snore. Then Jack quietly climbed out of the oven, crept past the cannibal, grabbed one bag of gold and rushed to the beanstalk. He threw the bag down and he began to go down the stem lower and lower until, finally, he found himself at his house. Jack told his mother everything that had happened to him, and handed her a bag of gold. They began to live on the money that was in the bag. But eventually the sack was empty and Jack decided to try his luck one more time at the top of the beanstalk. One fine morning, he got up early and climbed a beanstalk. The man-eater's wife stood at the threshold of the huge castle. She said that she would not let him in because the last time her husband had lost a bag of gold. But all the same, she took pity on the poor boy and led him into the castle. Suddenly the footsteps of a giant were heard and Jack again hid in the furnace. The cannibal entered and told his wife to bring the hen that lays the golden eggs. The giantess brought it and the ogre ordered the chicken to lay and she laid the golden egg. The pleased giant began nodding and snoring. Then Jack climbed out of the oven, grabbed the golden chicken and rushed to the beanstalk. The boy returned home. He showed his mother a wonderful chicken, and they began to live selling golden eggs. But soon it seemed to Jack that this was not enough. And he again decided to try his luck at the top of the beanstalk. This time the boy climbed into the castle through the window. He jumped into a copper cauldron and hid. The cannibal and his wife entered the room. The giant smelled the boy, and they rushed to look for him in the oven. But he was not there. They searched every nook and cranny, but they didn't think to look into the copper cauldron. Desperate to search, the ogre ordered his wife to bring a golden harp and put it on the table. Under her beautiful sounds, the cannibal snored. Then Jack quietly climbed out of the cauldron grabbed the golden harp and rushed to the door. But the harp played loudly and woke the cannibal. 
Jack ran at breakneck speed, leaping onto a beanstalk, and the giant in pursuit. Jack went down to his house, and yelled at his mother to carry the axe. The mother ran out with an axe in her hands, the boy grabbed the axe, and began to chop the beanstalk. The ogre felt the stem swing violently and stopped. Then Jack struck again with an axe and cut the beanstalk. It swayed and collapsed, and the ogre fell to the ground and crashed. From that day on, Jack and his mother never knew poverty again. But the boy was very sorry that, because of their greed, they almost paid with their lives. He promised that he would never steal again, and would work hard for the good of the family. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. Once her rich father married an evil stepmother. She settled in the house with her two daughters. Their faces were beautiful and white, but their hearts were evil and cruel. And then came a difficult time for the poor girl. From morning until late in the evening, they forced her to do dirty work, carry water, heat the stove, cook food, wash dishes, and do laundry. And besides, the half-sisters did their best to upset her as much as possible they mocked her, poured peas and wheat into the ashes, and she had to sit and pick them out. In the evening, when she was tired of work, she had to go to bed not in bed, but on the floor, next to the stove. And because she was always in ash, dust, and dirty, the sisters called her Cinderella. But then it happened one day that the king started a feast, which was supposed to last for three whole days, and called all the beautiful girls of the country to the holiday so that his son could choose a bride for himself. When the two named sisters learned that they, too, could come to the feast, they instantly began to dress up and preen. Cinderella also wanted to go dancing, but her stepmother did not let her go, because she had no dress or shoes, and she was dirty. And then the evil stepmother poured a bowl of wheat into the ashes and said that if Cinderella collected it in two hours, then she could go with her sisters. Cinderella went out into the garden and cried. And then two white doves flew in, followed by a whole flock of different birds. They swooped down on the ash and began to peck, and so they chose all the grains in a bowl. In less than an hour, they finished their work, and everyone flew back. Cinderella brought a bowl to her stepmother, began to rejoice, thinking that she could go to the feast. But her stepmother would not let her in any way. She turned her back on Cinderella and hurried with her two daughters to the ball. When there was no one left at home, Cinderella sat down on the floor and cried with grief. And then two white doves flew in, followed by a whole flock of different birds, and they threw off their dress and shoes shiny and all in gold. She quickly put on this dress and came to the bride. They saw her stepsisters and stepmother and thought that it must be some strange princess she was so beautiful in her golden dress. It never occurred to them that it was Cinderella. The prince came out to meet her, took her hand, and they began to dance. And he liked Cinderella so much that he did not want to dance with any other girl. She danced until the evening and wanted to return home, but the prince asked her to see her off. He wanted to know whose beautiful girl this is and where she lives. But Cinderella ran away from him and climbed onto the dovecot. The prince ordered to destroy the dovecot, but there was no one in it. And nowhere near could he find his beautiful stranger. No one could have guessed that Cinderella was rescued by pigeons that took her home. The prince was upset and went to the palace with his head down. And suddenly he saw a shoe, lifted it up it was so small and elegant and all of pure gold. The prince guessed that when Cinderella ran away from him, the shoe from her left foot remained on one of the steps. The prince was delighted and ordered to find the mistress of this shoe, and to whom it suits he will marry that one. The parents returned from the ball, they saw that Cinderella was asleep in her shirt on ash, and a dim light was on by the stove. 
Both sisters went to their rooms, hoping that tomorrow they would be lucky enough to put on the golden slipper. The next day, the prince came to their house and said that everyone who wants to try on the shoe of his future wife should come out. Two sisters came out, and the stepmother locked Cinderella in the house and did not let her out. The older sister tried it on a small shoe. The younger sister tried it on the shoe as great. The prince was about to leave, but Cinderella climbed out of the window and ran out to him. And she put on a shoe, and it just fit her. The prince looked into her eyes and recognized in her the very beautiful girl with whom he danced. He took Cinderella, put her on a horse and rode off to play a wedding with her. And he ordered the sisters and stepmother to be locked in their house and never let them out of there. This is how they were punished for their malice and deceit. <laughs>